Hello again, everyone. If you're following my journey with Morgan, this is my second video, but meet Morgan. She is a Camelot macaw, seven years old, and this is her deformed left foot. As you can see, it makes perching a little bit difficult. Um, she has had one toe amputated. That's why you only see three. However, check this out. I was actually able to get her to land and perch pretty normally. Um, so we've been working on this. I also got her on a scale, so I've been taking her weight daily just to keep track. She's a lot heavier than my guys. So, And I have her also eating our pellets, which was really exciting. So I decided on a few of the days to just kind of let her hang out and get accustomed to just being with me. I'm working on creating a stronger bond, and that means more time with Morgan. A major win this week was definitely target training Morgan, and for those of you that caught it live, it went a little something like this. Let's see, right there, looks good. Hey everyone, Jamie coming at you today with Morgan, the Camelot Macaw. So she is seven years old, right? Yes. Patty? Mm -hmm. So she's seven years old. This is, I think, really my second day of working with her officially. I have my treats. I have little pieces of walnut and pine nuts in here. And I'm going to try target training her for the first time ever. She's never been target trained. Um, she's not on the training diet, so I don't know if this is going to work well or not. <laughs> We're going to find out. And she's never seen a target stick. So I'm just going to show you guys what this for real looks like. Are you kidding me? It looks I like thought you were just letting them know what the clipper sounded like. <laughs> no. Seriously? Yeah, she just touched it. Like she knows it already. <laughs> she just did it perfect. <laughs> so it's kind of awesome when that happens. <laughs> Everyone's like, I know what she's doing. <laughs> you guys, I swear she's <laughs> never <laughs> she's never heard the clicker. <laughs> she's never seen the target stick. <laughs> but this is how easy it is, apparently. Oh, <laughs> and she's not on the training diet. This is so funny. I was literally set up to fail today, y'all. But touch to your bird. Three seconds. The cool thing about that targeting session is it's exactly what we try to get most of our clients to do and just work with the bird's natural curiosity. The first time you present the stick, normally they'll be curious enough to just simply touch it and as long as you click and follow it up with an, a reward immediately, you can usually keep the bird touching the stick from there on out. It's when you miss that initial curiosity touch that you can often run into issues convincing your bird to touch it again. So this was really, really cool, and I was super excited how quickly she caught on, and um, I wanted to make sure it wasn't a fluke, so I targeted her all around our island to make sure that she really understood. I'm hoping while I'm just hanging out, doing my thing, that Morgan will fly. It took a solid five and a half minutes for Morgan to decide to take her very first flight to me while I was doing my own thing. So definitely patience is a virtue in this. Go about your stuff, but always be on high alert for when you think that she may come so that you can be ready. Because my main thing is trying to have my arm out and ready and catch her on my arm or my hand instead of my shoulder or my back. And the reason that I constantly have to turn my back on her to get her to fly is because she doesn't trust landing on somebody's hand or arm. Some of the signals that Morgan gives to me to let me know that she is going to fly sometime soon to me is she will walk off the chair and she will get onto the counter and then she will really watch me and study me and hunch down. Normally she'll actually poop on the counter right before she flies. So these are things I look for to be ready. She might be coming. So here she's already onto the counter. She's hunching down. She's really studying me. She poops literally right here on the counter. So here's the pooping, done. Here's the looking, 
the hunting and the flight. And I actually caught her just like this, which is awesome. I'm so excited. Only 55 and a half minutes for one repetition. Dirty music that changes color. Which one do I do? Let's see if I pretend that I'm doing something. Oh, she was about to go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. All sorts of people messing with our session. All sorts of people doing it. I'll put you away so I can go make so I can make some lunch. Hey guys, Jamie here. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you made it this far, I appreciate that you're joining Morgan and I on this journey with her. I wanted to fill in some background tidbits and information. I am definitely Morgan's favorite person. She actually, just a couple days ago, started regurgitating for me, which I didn't want our relationship to go there, but she's, she's bonded, let's say that. Um, so now I need to work on not triggering emotion, like hormonal behaviors, basically. So it's gotten to that point. So I'm happy to have the bond in place. However, I originally intended to train Morgan and Patty kind of at the same time. I envisioned doing flight training between Patty and I. Um, but then she actually walked in on one of our sessions and I decided to incorporate her right then and there and it did not go well at all. Morgan became super possessive of me. Um, she got very jealous and then she got intolerant with Patty. So any little nuance Patty would do that she didn't like, she would just like put up a complete stink about. And I realized that it was just really detri detrimental to both of our relationships and I realized we couldn't work together. So I'm going to have to do all the training solo, which means that the bond is going to go from kind of here where Patty is like neutral and I'm preferred. It's probably like a 70 30 scale right now and it's going to go bam and it's going to go probably to a 100 zero or like a 90 10 and that makes it really hard for the other person to create a bond and get that bird that bird to like them again but we have a plan for it um so patty and i talked it out and she's okay with it because it's just going to be the temporary it's what i'm going to use to get morgan flying consistently so I just wanted to kind of fill that in for you guys because we have to create a plan or we usually do create a plan and then things don't always go as planned. So as a trainer, you have to be able to adjust constantly to what the bird tells you. And, uh, and so this is how we're going to adjust. So I'm just going to be working with Morgan Solo. And there are a few instances since Patty lives here too that she's going to be around Patty a little bit during some sessions. As you can see during the flight training session, that was Patty singing and crossing in the way and stuff. And luckily it didn't seem to affect Morgan. She still responded. But what I'm noticing is she's getting more aggressive towards me, more possessive, um, and just at a super heightened state when Patty's around, almost like she's in competition. So I'm trying to avoid Patty being a part of any of the training or interactions because it just ends up not being the ideal thing and I don't want to deal with an aggressive bird. So if you're having things that are similar, try to avoid putting your bird in the situation at which you know it's going to fail and or set you up to fail or become negative in some way as far as aggression. So you guys may be wondering what is my plan from here and basically I'm going to continue with the tar target training. I'm going to try to get her to do that and respond to that anywhere and everywhere. So I'm going to change it from the counter over to a perch, over to her cage, um, and just change the environment so that target training really is 100% because I feel like that's the foundation of the full spectrum of training. Um, it's also a hands-off approach, so if she is getting aggressive, it's something that I can work on without having to worry about being bitten. So I'm going to continue with the target training, just making sure that that is like 98% effective all the time. And the other thing is I'm going to start encouraging her flight more and more and more. So that means having her out and around me more. That means having my back to her more. And hopefully encouraging her to fly to me facing her eventually because when I get there, that's going to be a massive breakthrough for me. So I really want to teach her that I can catch her on my hand or my arm and we can do this whole thing around 
the left foot. Like we can make it work. So I'm really excited and hopefully I get to that breakthrough soon.